Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this session involving the cloud native maturity model. I'm Simon Forster. I'm the founder and director of Stackergy, a UK based consultancy on dealing with cloud native technology. And I'm Danielle Cook from Fairwinds. Uh, we are some of the, we're the co organizers of the Cartographos Working Group, which you'll learn about more later. I'm John Foreman, Master Technology Architect at Accenture. And I'm Robbie Glenn, a, de a delivery manager at Accenture. Okay, so the, um, the Cartographos Working Group was founded in 2021, and uh, the aim was to help end users navigate the cloud native landscape and the wider cloud native ecosystem. Uh, so far, we've been working on the cloud native maturity model. Uh, Cartographos, by the way, is uh, Greek, and it stands for a navigator. Every captain or Kubernetes or governor needs a, ma a navigator. All right, so you guys may or may not be familiar how we started the project, kind of graphics working group. It all started with an initiative where all of us had different models that we were working on separately. And then together, we kind of came together from the CNCF to create kind of graphics that you see today. But what I really had seen beyond that was the current you know, journey to cloud native. Where first, we had the big wave for DevOps. You guys remember that? No, I'm sorry. Back up one second. Journey to cloud was first, right? Journey to cloud, where everybody's J2C, Everybody's going to the cloud. You know, we we'll save money. Let's all go to the cloud. And then it was once we're in the cloud, now we've got to develop. Then the whole DevOps journey began, right? It was a big culture change for everybody, right? That we evolved to DevOps. And then the third one was when cloud native was starting to become more of a Kubernetes win, there was a, a rush for Kubernetes to the cloud. But when we're doing this though, there was no handbook, right? Just to the slide, there was no handbook. Everybody kind of crashed into the cloud. Nobody went there gracefully with a process or framework. They just ran right into it. So the whole idea of Cardinal Office is to, is to give people the framework to go to the cloud native maturity in, 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 in a, in a policy-driven way, right? Next slide. So why did we need a maturity model? We've already talked on it, or touched on it a little bit before. Um, we have the landscape, we have the trail map. They're very technology-centric, and that's not the whole piece of the puzzle. You know, who's actually developing this stuff? Who's actually implementing it? It's a lot of people. How are they doing it? Process. Um, and, uh, and what are they doing? What are they allowed to do? So we took a, a different uh, approach, and instead of just focusing on the technology aspects, we wanted to expand that and include uh, other pieces. Um, so we have plenty of challenges. <laughs> um, so first of all, we're you know, thinking about very large companies, usually that's the size companies that we're typically working with, but we want this to be relevant to everybody, uh, including down to like individual developers or, or people just learning uh, um, Kubernetes maybe to, you know, bring it into their organization. Maybe they're not a practitioner themselves. Um, we also, you know, on the left side, we uh, are trying to avoid, you know, crowning any king, make, being a, a king maker in the industry or anything like that. So we try and be very um, uh, technology agnostic or as high level as we can. We do have to, you know, make some um, references to CNCF projects in, in some cases so that we have something to, to you know, um, a frame of reference. So the maturity model, um, covers, as we were developing it, we realized that there were some key themes that were coming out. And throughout this conference so far, we've been hearing a lot about people, process, policy, technology, and business outcomes, I think, is a major point um, that we cover. Within each of, with, within the model, we talk through these five themes throughout every level, looking at, like, what do your people need to do? How do they need to shift culturally? What processes do you have in place Today and as you move to cloud native, what it, what does that look like? What sort of CI/CD pipelines do you need to put in place? What workflows? With policy, we dig into what compliance standards need to be put in place. How are you going to automate this policy? Technology, of course, is you know there's this whole ecosystem. We do not, as as Robbie said, we don't make recommendations of use this technology or that, but we do say you're going to need tools like this. 
Um, and then business outcomes and something that came up as we were, you know, we were involved in a CTO summit yesterday, looking at what should you be communicating to your bosses, or the business, the board, and whatnot. Like, why are you doing this journey? Um, so the model covers all of these these five areas. Um, and then the levels of the maturity are around, you know, there's five different levels. So build is all about you are in pre-production, you're figuring this out, you're trialing it, uh, lots of proof of concepts in this stage. Operate is level two, and that's when you get to production. Usually that's around, you know, one application, you're trying it out, you're maybe not doing something that is business critical. Scale is when you are now scaling up, looking at how you can get more applications uh, in the cloud native space. Improving is where you're looking at decisions you made around security and policy and you know, compliance and, and revisiting them and looking at, well, maybe we need to do this a little bit better. And then optimize is really when you figured it all out, which is the holy grail, and there's not many of us who are here. Um, and you're now going, well, what tools have I created that I could perhaps give back to the CNCF? Or where are there areas where just a small little optimization will really help us out? So um, there is, and I'm just gonna mention it here, the link to our GitHub repo that goes into this, and you can get all the details and read through it at length. So what we wanted to do next was instead of kind of just go through a PowerPoint slides and details, we wanted to actually kind of have a little panel discussion about each one of these stages. Um, and we invite all of you to, if you have questions as we go through it, to raise your hand, ask them, and we will, we will answer as we go along. So the first level is all around building, as I said. You're in pre-production. So uh, the first question we have, and I don't have who I'm asking this to up in front of me, um, is around what should you be expecting of your team in this stage? John, why don't, why don't you take this? Thanks. Well, in, in the past, everything started where, everything was in the basement, right? Cloud Native started in the basement and most companies where developers had geeked up on Kubernetes, on the cloud, all those great things. But as you get real with the stuff to go to production, to be serious about this, at level one, we want to take it from the basement to production. At least begin the journey anyway. Automation leads later on, but we first get there. It's, it's baby steps. It, it, it's a marathon to sprint to what do you want to call it, right? It's one day at a time. What you expect in the beginning is just a lot of training. Living up, bringing in the right resources. A lot of times our clients will, you know, trade up the current resources or hire from outside to bring in cloud resources. So what you expect from the team is you're building the team basically in level one. Right? It builds, it's build the team, build the process, build, build the processes. And you're really, it's upskilling a lot too, pivoting people. I know that was one of the themes that came out of the CTO summit yesterday, where it's a cultural shift and that is the almost sometimes the hardest part yeah. about going to cloud native. Well, at DevOps as well, the, the biggest journey with DevOps was culture, right? This is no different. So um, next up is around CICD. So it's talked about a lot. There's a lot of sessions on that. So Robbie, do you want to kind of tell us what we should be expecting here in level one? Yeah, I mean, you're not going to try and boil the ocean, right? You want to start with things that are comfortable to uh, with uh, for you to operate. Um, you want to automate those things quickly. Things that you're going to do often, um, certainly, you know, a lot of times, especially on in the in kind of the build phase, uh, you're going to focus more on automating your deployments rather than like some kind of integration step, uh, because you know a lot of times you're a small team and you might not really have any kind of integration to do really. Uh, but you want to make sure that you know the managing. You know, you don't want to be running kubectl apply all the time. For example, you want something to to manage that for you, um, provide that consistency. Um, so. You really want to focus on things to make your life easier, right? Uh, but anything that you automate is going to, you know, improve your life later on. So, awesome. And so um, we talk, you know, policy being one of the key themes. So, Simon, do you even care about policy in level one? Absolutely. So every organization exists within a context. There are very few organizations that are starting out from a greenfield uh, estate. Um, and also, particularly if they're in, for example, the healthcare or the financial services industry, they're going to be subject to a lot of external regulation. 
likewise, if an organization already has a, a large amount of existing policy that is in place, for example, regulations around who has access to what systems, you're going to need to know about that. It's wise to be aware of that at level one. And, you know, baseline technology, what do I need to have in place? More than we potentially we would have assumed. With level one, where uh, we are building, attempting to build cloud native applications, and we are in, um, we are not in production yet, but we still do require Kubernetes. We'll still be considering our source control. Many of these things we may already have. We'll also need to be thinking about what, are, what about our network zones, our infrastructure, our firewalls, because for many organizations, particularly if they are using public cloud service providers, they're going to need to get all of that access in place. So there will be a, th a significant amount of investment and tooling required, even at that very first stage with development. And I think the final point in level one before we go on is around what you should be communicating to the business. And this is where I think as an industry and as technologists, like we don't always do a great job at. So here in level one, we really, you know, in the maturity model talks about setting KPIs that the business understands. So they're not gonna get the nitty gritty of why you chose to pick this tech over that, but they should understand, okay, because we're doing this, we're going to be able to ship code faster by X amount of time and we're gonna measure it and that's what we're putting in place in level one. You might not have all the answers to that or all the metrics yet, but definitely spend the time to put the KPIs in place that your business leaders are gonna understand. So if we move on to level two, this is around operating. So I'm gonna go back to you, Simon, and ask around, you know, what, what, what tech do I need here? So this, we're in production now. This is the very first step where we re, where our application, potentially a very small use case, will be live within production. We uh, will need to have CI, obviously, in place and a, a means of releasing. We may be still be using imperative cube control commands, particularly if it is a very small installation, but you may wish to be raising your eyes towards GitOps even at this point. So will you be considering a GitOps operator, for example, or one of the CNCF projects that occupy this, this space? Uh, likewise, RBAC and other, thing, other components they'll also need to be in place almost certainly as well. And Robbie, this next one's for you around policy. How, are, how is it evolving as you move into the second level? Yeah, so you're gonna have more policies, you know. It's, uh, it's, you're gonna see actually uh, over kind of the, the full, you know, journey, you're gonna see a, a big explosion as you get to like level three right, of technologies, of tools, of, of code. Um, and then, you know, over time, you're gonna start whittling that down, making it a little bit more, um, you know, uh, streamlined. So at level two, you're, you're, you're piling on the policies, you're adding in, uh, you know, ma maybe um, something like um, a, a policy controller of some sort. And uh, there's tons of policy types out there. We won't, don't need to go into all of them, but I would say that, you know, the more that you know the better, right? So, uh, of course, you want to be adding your monitoring tools in as well, but having those policies, at least even in, uh, in you know, kind of a dry run mode, gives you a lot more visibility on, you know, what people are actually doing, what they need to do to do their jobs, because sometimes policies can get in the way. And so, um, in terms of like related with process, so, you know, what, what is part of the process? Like, what are you, what should you be scanning for as you're, you know, you're doing change control, you're doing logging, you're doing all these things, but like, what is there things you should be scanning for in stage two, level two? I mean, a lot of it is the same stuff that you're scanning for, you know, you're, you, you're not turning off your intrusion detection or anything like that. A lot of times it's, uh, um, you're providing defense in depth 
right? So you're taking your firewall rules that you have maybe you know, defined on your network and, and pushing them maybe into your cluster as network policies or something like that. So you're taking all of those things that you know, your organization already does uh, and really trying to apply them in, in the Kubernetes world. And that takes a lot of uh, you know, kind of iteration. It's about for, for a second. I think at level one, it's about you know scanning the containers during build time. But a graduate to level two, I just want to scan them at rest as well. This is when I begin to really build the policies around my my repositories, create my golden images, right? This is where that, that concept gets started, right? Within that as well, about scanning at rest as well as build time. At the same time, sawing the image also becomes part of the process too, because if I don't saw my image, why even bother scanning it, right? So those processes, you know, I, I need a level two to start that maturity level to really understand what that means. Because if I don't do it now, when I get to level three or four, it's you know, uh, uh, basically dead. So I have thousands of vulnerabilities at the point that I can't even repair. So you guys start this in level two. Well, and while you have the mic, John, uh, what should you be expecting of your team and people in this stage? Daniel, it's a good question. It's a great question. So, so level one is about upscaling right, what you have. But level two, it's about becoming more about a master of your domain. Really understand the technology very well to become more fluent with it. Where now, you know, in stage one, you are becoming, right, a, a cloud native engineer. In level two, you are a cloud native engineer. You gotta mature to that level to, to believe you are at that level to achieve these goals. And the biggest thing with this also is new technology is always coming out, right? There's always a new version of Kubernetes, a new version of Istio and everything else out there. In level two, it's important also to see what's new that's out there. So when the new things are coming out, I'm prepared for those as well. And we know the landscape CCF is evolving every day. To stay on top of that alone is his own job. But level two is you really want to begin focusing on that as well. And how do you know, um, and this one's for you, Robbie, how do you know that you're actually reached maturity in level two? Yeah, so there's a, a big tendency, we see this at, at, uh, at some of our clients, um, to say, well, we're 90% at level two, so let's just say we're at level two, right? No, um, you're still at level whatever, you know, that you're at 100% coverage of. So, you know, if you have, um, uh, you know, all the, all the, the pieces, uh, it, 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 you know, in place except for your policies or something like that, then you're never going to, you're never going to get to level three, that's for sure. You're never going to be able to scale. You're never going to find, uh, you're never going to be able to, to see what's even available to be able to scale. So, uh, you know, putting those things in place early is important. Um, yeah. So before we move on to the next level, I was just curious if anyone had any questions about level one, level two. Okay, cool. Well, so one you... one point I guess to to finish on that is like for example we're at we're at production maybe with one app right. At, by the time we get to level three, we want to be scaled or to start scaling right. Be prepared to scale right. So. It's not going to be just enough, okay, we got one app to production, we're at level two, let's go to level three directly, right? There's still going to be maybe a long time at each individual level where we're building on uh, what got us to this level. We're building on that and, and kind of providing that, you know, spreading it out uh, um, across the organization. So a seg nice segue to scale. So Simon, this question is for you and it's around scale. So. What does it really mean? Am I scaling one application? Am I scaling many? Uh, we look at scale within this model as being both, is a simple answer. Uh, w within level two, we're really focusing on a single application or a certain center of excellence within your organization already. With, with level three, we're looking at, <clears throat> can we scale out individual applica our applications horizontally or vertically? Can we bring in the load? Have we developed the level of trust and confidence in our cloud native platforms to be able to do that? Secondly, we may be scaling out to multiple applications as well. And that's a, a really vital part of it. This is the, era, the level at which we expect to see the most complexity within the environment. And so that's interesting. So how are you solving for complexity at this stage? And this is open to anyone from seeing it all. Here's the thing I get. 
Um, so one thing that we talk about with the, the people aspect is, you know, now is the time that you're going to really start thinking about a center of excellence. I think John brought that up. Uh, you really want to take that knowledge capital that you've built. You don't want to have, not everybody's going to be a security expert, or I mean a, a Kubernetes expert. Not everybody at your organization needs to have the CKA, for example. At some point, you know, you really just need operators or, or people, you might have even abstraction layers that, you know, uh, um, keep things very simple for your end users at, at, at uh, this stage. So how do you, how do you manage that, that complexity? I think part of it is just um, you know, centralizing a lot of that, that knowledge capital in something of a, a center of excellence. It, do, it doesn't have to be a formal role or a formal group. It can just be you know, a, a designation uh, of, of individuals who really provide that thought leadership within the organization. Well, and there was one end user that we were talking to yesterday, and what they do at their organization is they provide these pathways. So as you're, you know, you want your developers using Kubernetes, coding, all of that, they put this path together, and you can choose, I want path A or B or C, but you have to stay on that path. There's guardrails established around it. Did you have something you want to add? Okay. Um, so here, Simon, what... Once you've reached this stage, what are things, how do you communicate the value to the business at this stage for scale? As much as you possibly can. It's really vital as we, uh, as we have a lot more complexity within our estate, we realize that not one single individual or one single group is able to, to continue to do everything. Because of the, uh, increasing level of maturity that we, we hope you'll be seeing within your platform, you'll be able to really take advantage of, for example, the operator ecosystem that we have within Kubernetes. And good examples are making sure that we take advantage of that for our applications as well as our platforms. So are we taking advantage of, of operators for applications? But what you, is absolutely vital is that senior people and decision makers are aware of this and what this means. There's a, uh, as I'm sure we've all experienced, when we've taken an, a very complex application and done traditional installations of it, it's been a very long drawn out project. If we're able to take advantage of the capabilities of the platform, a good example, let's say the Strimsy operator off the top of my head for Kafka, we can, we can really deliver a lot of value. And senior decision makers need to be aware of this. Well, and I think there, uh, there was another session that we attended where it was, if you think you've communicated the business value, you should communicate it eight more times at least. Like people need to hear it and uh, it's super important. So um, moving on, so there's gonna be a ton of tech that you have in place at this stage. But what are two things that you might not have had in place that you really need in this stage? And I can throw that over to any of you. I think at this point, you want to begin to, to create templates for things, begin that process of actually putting things to code, right? At uh, level four, at that point, I'll make sure I get there, but at level three, I could be putting those seeds to create my templates. Whether it's for a Terraform, or my policy is code for OPA, or what it may be, I think starting that process right now with the policy is code, level three is critical to get to that, that level. I have the skill also, when I have multiple fleets, or if my strategy is multi-cloud, which every client today, every company today is multi-cloud. Nobody's going cloud anymore, right? So now if I have multi-cloud, that makes things complicate two X more. So would it be kind of cool to have policies where everything's driven from one area that could push out to multiple clouds? So at level three, when I'm scaling, during scaling, I gotta think about multi-cloud as well. What, what is my multi-cloud strategy? That's critical level three as well. All right, so just conscious of the time, we're gonna move on to uh, the fourth level around improving. And so kind of starting with you, John, here. Uh, so what does it actually mean? Like, what am I improving? Good question, Danielle. So at level four, what you're improving is we're from level three. So if you look at the, the maturity model from one to five, okay, most clients are on level two. Of course, when I speak to them, they say, John, I'm on level four. And I go, no, you're not. You're at level two. Most are between, seriously, between a one and a two today. But they want to get to a four to five to really become at that level. Level four, as I'm improving things, 
I started to do more things at scale. I could take my, my deployments now and begin my, my, my blue green canary or my you know, blue blue deployments at that point. Also, doing the multiple strategy again at scale to be able to push my policies across multiple ones. What it means to prove at level four is to be able to get my securities code up to par along with my governance model. The center of excellence that I began in levels two and three is now becoming more mature as well. All my processes, all my procedures, what's documented, whether there's a conflict, whatever it is, at that point, everything is well you know, positioned in that area right now. And so when you, you, know, you were talking about policy code in level three, and this, this question's for you, Simon, and it's around, so now if I have some policy in place, like could you give me maybe an example policy or maybe not, um, and talk about how you enforce it at this stage? Because I think that becomes really important. We would hope that by the time that we've reached level four, we're really taking advantage again of the automation that we have within the platforms. We do have projects within the CNCF. We know of OPA, we understand Gatekeeper. We have all of the, the admission controller ecosystem within the Kubernetes to take advantage of. We would expect to, set, to make sure that nothing that doesn't meet our policy requirements is able to simply enter production. We would be enforcing this. And it actually helps us improve. It's actually part of the improving you know, process because then we can unlock things like self-service. Like I uh, just think if you could not have to pay a bunch of engineers to build your tools, you can just have uh, them, you know, your engineers fill out a form somewhere and, and something automatically takes care of it and it's all, you know, within your security and, uh, and, and you know, compliance, so. Well, and, you know, I'd like to think about that as Kubernetes guardrails, right? So we're giving, we're letting devs safely develop within the guardrails that we're giving. So, you know, I always like the picture of bowling where you have the guardrails and you can get the ball down and it gets there. Um, so it's a good good thing to make sure you have those in place when you're here. Um, so now we're going to go. We're going to we're, we're cruising through level four to level five around optimization. So you know you have people in place and you have gone through all this. Like, what do I expect of my people? How have my teams evolved? Open to anyone. Oh, I guess open to me. Level five is where I'm fully mature. Again, in lateral action, my people are not experts. Uh, they're not SMEs, subject matter experts at this level. Now they are SMEs graduating from level one to level five at that level. So you expect at that point, you know, f for your, your staff to be experts in cloud native, to take things to scale. Anything new being developed is now cloud native. You know, VMware and legacy stuff is now dead or it's dying anyway, a poor, sick death. But any new development, is anything Greenfield, at this point, it's definitely going to be cloud native. Not only that, it's going to be fully automated as well. And so, um, Simon, I'm going to go back to you for a second. So, Simon works in heavy regulated industries. Let me go to that. Uh, and so, now you're at level five, you're optimized. What about compliance? Like, what are you changing in this stage? Our hope and our aim is to be able to see both internal and external regulations really reflected within the policies and the uh, compliance that we uh, have within our cloud environments. We um, wish that we want to be able to see all of the, yeah, I think that's probably the most important takeaway. Which, um, and we would like to see regulation in code. And kind of final question on this stage is around, you know, how the tech stack has evolved. And, you know, we talk about how here you're revisiting decisions you made maybe in level one and level two. So are you contributing codes to projects or are you selecting new vendors? What's happening here? And that's open to anyone. I think one of the biggest things any company today is technical debt. Technical debt will start your growth to be cloud native. We all know that it's reality. But yet we have four, 10, 20 tools that do the same thing in our, in our landscapes. So when it comes to tech evolution within my process of one to five, at level five, I'm gonna get very lean. I'm gonna start you know, cutting that, throwing the, the, straightening out the old technology basically in other levels. At level five, technical debt should be none. I should be at, at the level where I have you know, the, only the best free tools running my environment. So as my tech evolves, I need to get to that point. 
And also keep in mind that most clients will not be a level five. I'm sorry to say that. If I'm Spotify, I'm born cloud native te technically, so I'm not level five. But most companies today, most clients say go into cloud native, they will live between your four and five, right? And possibly even closer to, to four. Because you still have the legacy in the background doing certain data lakes and processes to really not give you that, that entire level five. But at the same time, you may have different work streams. Some applications can be level five, some may be a level two and three and four. Don't think that you know it's all or nothing. It's not like if I'm at level five, everything's at level five. I can also have a mix with it, my, my environment as well. Awesome. So now uh, we're going to pass over to Simon to talk a little bit about where we're evolving the maturity model. So uh, for us, we've, we, this is an open, this is a CNCF initiative. We are a group within the CNCF and we would like, first off, we would love contributions. Uh, we um, uh, are looking at um, publishing of the artifacts. Right now they're in GitHub within our GitHub repo, we're looking at incorporating them into the CNCF website. Uh, we uh, will also be continuing our partnership with the tags in order to go and reflect their work within the model and also assist them where they wish to go and baseline their technologies, processes, and, and people and, as well. Uh, and uh, we would also like to get to a stage, if possible, of implementing scoring in code. We'd like to take our, ourselves to level five, if we possibly can. Well, and I think what's really here, if any of you are on a tag or whatnot, we want to make sure that the maturity be model becomes this repository of, I can go here and I can access all the amazing content that everybody's working on, because I think sometimes within the CNCF, we think people know that something exists, but it, it doesn't. So if everybody could use the maturity model and go there and be like, I know I'm going to get the resources from tag security because there's links through in here or you know whatever the, the tag is. So that is the ultimate goal with this. So we'd really like you to check out the repository. It's on GitHub. Uh, we would love to see your issues. And um, if there's anything you'd like to see changed, feel free to submit a pull request. Uh, we also hold uh, community meetings every second Tuesday at uh, 1 p.m. US Eastern Time, and we're also on CNCF Slack. We'd love to continue the conversation with you as well. And if you don't already have one, we've got a pile of brochures up here, and we also have a booth in the pavilion area, in the project pavilion. Thank you. I just want to say, one more thing, if anybody adopts Kygraphics in their environment and actually can have it running successfully, right, we invite you to have to stand with us to present it. And that'd be really super cool if somebody can do that, right? I would love to see that happen, actually do a use case of this model in real life. Now, we've done it individually with the clients and working models, but actually taking it from zero to hero of the strategy would be super cool to see. And then if we do that, we also find the deltas and the gaps in our models as well. Something to have to think about.